Hi everybody, how are you doing? Hope you're doing good. So welcome to my series all about British history. This is where I go back in time in my little time machine that is called Google. Not gonna lie. Um, we go back in time and we look at history, events and people that changed history forever. Today I'm looking back at the probably the one of the most well-known royals in history. This woman, right? She stood tall in a man's world. This was a man's world. And she were like, no, I've got this. And she were known for marrying her country and all the people, all the people in England were so much children. Of course, we are talking about Elizabeth the first. And this is basically a story of how she got to where she was. Um, a childhood a journey to the throne because trust me, this, this it wasn't an easy journey. So Elizabeth was born on the 7th of September, 1533, and her father was Henry VIII. We all know him, we all, we all know him. I'm gonna say we all love him, we all know him. And her mother was Anne Boleyn. Do you remember Anne Boleyn? To say Elizabeth had a difficult childhood would have probably been an understatement, 100%. You'd think because she were royalty, she'd have probably had a good childhood, but you know, it didn't quite work out like that. She had it rough, did our Elizabeth? Elizabeth was three year old when her mother was sadly executed by her father. Imagine that. That would be an awkward Christmas, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? As we know in the past video, her mother, Anne Boleyn, was accused of treason, incest, and conspiracy to kill the king as well, which I think is the treason bit, I don't know. And adultery, that way. Adultery, treason, and incest. And that's why, which we all think she was actually falsely accused of now, like looking back in history. She was probably falsely accused, which is really sad because she like died for no reason. And I believe two weeks after her mum's death, her dad had already moved on, Henry, and two, I think it was two weeks later, he married Jane Seymour and she ended up getting pregnant and having a boy. We love that for Henry. Henry always wanted a boy. Back then people just wanted boys because a boy was an heir. People didn't see a woman being a leader in any way but obviously after elizabeth's mum died and everything changed for elizabeth like everything henry and anne's marriage was an old which basically made elizabeth a royal bastard they called her i'm not saying that but that's what they called it a royal bastard she was illegitimate from business line of concession is that the right word i don't know you know what i mean she's not she's not an heir anymore they even stripped her of her princess title and she ended up being called Lady Elizabeth. Which to us sounds like, like, fine, Lady Elizabeth, that's still... But, like, when you've been princess and then you're going to be like, oh, you're just Elizabeth now. Oh, Lady Elizabeth, sorry. Elizabeth still had her own household still. Like, she still had that kind of um, privilege as far as things go. She was still the king's daughter, but a governess. So, basically, the governess was... Almost like a babysitter or a carer, almost. Um, she ended up getting into writing a letter to the king saying, you need to send, like, the ones not sending the clothes. The ones not sending her stuff. She wrote a letter to the king basically saying, you're going to have to send her some new clothes because it's too small for her. Like, she, she can't fit in her clothes. You can't do it. It's not fair. It's it right. And imagine, like, Henry VIII, who's, like, a fierce leader, and you're like, I'm writing him a letter. I'm writing on a letter, but like it's not right. I'm gonna put my headband on. I, I bought an headband for this. And I didn't even put it on. Look at that. I thought it would fit in. Queen. So yeah, imagine that. You can't, your dad's the king, but he's still not sending you like clothes to get dressed to see that fit you. You'd be fuming, wouldn't you? You'd be like, I was a princess, and now he's not even sending me clothes. So after Jane Seymour, Henry's new wife, um, had given birth two weeks later, she unfortunately died through, due to complications of childbirth. Obviously, Henry was devastated. The whole country were pretty much mourning because she had given the country a new heir and people were just good, I suppose. I don't know if that's not the right word, gutted. You know what I mean? People were upset. Someone's just died, man. And she's just given us an heir. But the saddest part about this is it's leaving Edward motherless, do you know what I mean? And I believe Hen um, Elizabeth and Edward really bonded over this, like they had something in common, which is really sad. Like, I imagine that, that you had something in common, that's really sad. But they did really get on. They were also the same faith, so uh, both pro protestants, protestants, 
Elizabeth also had a half sister to Henry's first wife, um, that's Princess Mary, and she was Catholic. She was a lot older. I think she believes she was seventeen years older than Elizabeth. So they didn't have as close of a relationship as Elizabeth and Edward. They had a different faith. They obviously Elizabeth's mum basically made her mum split like they ended up getting a divorce because of Elizabeth's mum. So they didn't have the best connection, but they were okay with each other. I wouldn't say they were like besties, but they were definitely like close enough. I think the biggest thing that really tore them two apart though was the age, like the religious difference. I don't think the age gap, yeah, fair enough, it makes a difference, but I don't think the age gap was the main issue. I think the main issue was obviously the fact that Mary was Catholic and Elizabeth was not. But Elizabeth, Elizabeth did actually grow up to be very smart. She, people like noticed the intellect before anything else. She was very smart, she was fluent in French, English, Spanish, Greek, Latin. She did studies in politics, history, economics, I believe. Like, she was very smart. She could outwit a lot of people. Why is it giving Piglet vibes? I look like Piglet. And people, yeah, people just noticed her intellect. It was very similar. Mum was very clever as well. Also, people noted how much she was like Henry. She uh, looked like him, she had his fiery red hair, his temperament. She did, however, have a mum's eyes. But people did always comment about how she was like Henry. She was fierce like Henry. Do you know what I mean? She was she was definitely her father's daughter. It's a shame, really, you were a bit of a dick because like, I don't know. But they also say this upbringing for her, like she, she was almost neglected from her father. She didn't have a mother around anymore. A mum only ever wanted the best for her. It's sad sometimes because something that makes you stronger sometimes doesn't feel the greatest at the time, especially when you're a kid. A few years had passed, Henry had married again um, to Anne of Cleves, which got an old pretty much straight away due to, he said she were ugly, but there's more to it than that and whatever. But they did, they did remain to have a really good relationship. She ended up being called like the sister of the king. She got very well looked after by the king. But I think that's because she gave him a very, she was just like, this marriage isn't working. She had quite a close relationship to Elizabeth. Well, I wouldn't say a close, she didn't have a close relationship to Elizabeth, sorry. But she, she wasn't around enough to have a close enough relationship. But the time they did spend together was nice. And then Henry married Catherine Howard. Now, Catherine Howard was actually a cousin of Anne Boleyn. Keep it in the family area, Henry. Elizabeth and Hen um, Elizabeth and Catherine actually had a really close relationship. Um, very close. Some people say it helped bring Henry closer. Not exactly bang on with Elizabeth, but helped. Until she was found out of um, committing adultery and was beheaded, just like a mum. Which, imagine that, right? So you're like, do you know what? I ain't got much fam like my 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 sister my half sister my half sister doesn't really like me that much because I'm in a different religion. I've got a younger brother that we get on, that's fine. My dad's not really interested. My mum's not here anymore. And then I have an auntie. Give me an auntie. Cousin. Like second auntie, I don't know what it'd be, some sort of relation. Who is now my stepmom and she's really nice. I get on with her and then boom, she dies. I'd be like, bitch. I won't be like bitch, I probably won't say bitch. I don't know what I'd do. But that must be devastating for her. Also, at the point of Catherine's execution, Elizabeth would have only been eight years old. Eight years old, imagine, I, I can't even think about it. Like, that's insane. And she said to a close friend, Robert Dudley, she would never marry. After that point, she's like, I will never marry. I have no interest in it whatsoever. I. I don't care to marry. I don't care to marry. Which is a big deal, really, because back then you sort of needed. I don't want to say you needed to marry because you didn't, but you kind of did. You were sort of put into two categories of you'd either you'd marry, obviously, either higher. You couldn't get much higher than Elizabeth, to be fair. But you'd either marry above your station, marry for more power. So, for example, 
like to make more powerful as marry a different within a different country to make their country a better like it's just like all power play but she said to this point surely i am never marrying not doing it not for me thanks good day and quite honest i heard that rumor Henry did remarry again because obviously Henry doesn't wait two minutes to remarry. He moves on fast and pretty quick, do you know what I mean? And he married Catherine Parr, who actually reconcil reconciled, reconcil reconciled, helped their relationship. You <laughs> can't get the words out, guys. I don't know what it is. So basically, it, she helped rebuild their relationship back up. So um, Elizabeth was invited back to court. She ended up getting a princess title back and she ended up being in the line of recession is that the right word recession succession i think it's succession anyway she could be queen she was after edward and mary in 1547 henry the eighth passed away i don't want to put it like that which it was said that edward and elizabeth sobbed crying, realising what pressure's gonna be coming up next. I mean, Edward's gonna be king. Like, it's been sought out for him. Um, obviously they're both orphans at this point. And they're still only babies, you know what I mean? Elizabeth was 13 and Edward was nine. Nine. Obviously Edward, Edward didn't obviously become king. Well he did, but it, it was, he had counsellors basically people running the show while he was still learning what his court would actually do um and he was actually looked after by someone called um so edward seymour jane jane seymour's brother was actually in in control of basically looking after edward and making sure everything was fine and dandy he ended up being it was a duke of somerset that's it which I don't know what these means. Do you know this, right? There's all these like jokes of so-and-so and so-and-so it means something to me. I have no idea, never had. But he was basically in control of the king and helped him out when he didn't know what he was doing and all that fun stuff, I suppose. Catherine Parr actually moved on pretty quickly. Um, to be fair, she remarried, um, but she remarried an old love, a lo love lost in Thomas Seymour, which is Edward Seymour's brother. So everybody's related. You find these with these like older stories. You're like, everybody's like somehow connected. But Thomas Seymour was not a nice guy. We're gonna just put that out there. He is a horrible man and I'm not sure, I don't know, like Crack and Power got Elizabeth back in touch with her dad and like reconciled that relationship, but she seemed awful with Elizabeth. So Elizabeth stayed under the care of Catherine Parr. She lived with them, um, and obviously Thomas Seymour as well. But Thomas Seymour seemed to have other plans with Elizabeth. At the time she was 14, or just turned 14, um, and he'd sneak into her bedchamber in the morning. We don't know what happened, but obviously it doesn't sound good. It doesn't seem good at all, does it? Sneaking into her bed. At the time, he was in his late thirties, and she was fourteen. Just, just. And Catherine Parr seemed to be very aware of what was going on, which is insane. It's insane. Like she seemed to just let it happen. There was actually a time where Elizabeth was in her morning dress for her dad. Like her, you had like morning dresses, like black and stuff like that. And Elizabeth, no, not Elizabeth, Catherine Parr held Elizabeth down while Thomas Seymour ripped the dress into shreds off her. She's a 14 year old girl and he's a 30, mid, late 30s man. And she's, he's, oh, and she, she Catherine Parr, that's the step. What? What are you doing? It's vile. It's disgusting. Poor Elizabeth. And no wonder she didn't want to marry her. Like, she had these people in her life. Oh, poor girl. It really makes, like, chokes me up thinking about it. And then, oh. 
think I'm a champ this day. Elizabeth was clearly not comfortable with this because she started getting her maids coming in earlier so that he couldn't come in or she'd just get up and go, do you know what I mean? Like, let's go for a walk, girls. Get, get out before he gets here. Catherine Parr actually got pregnant but died on the 5th of September, 1548, due to complica complications of childbirth. And at that point, Elizabeth moved out of the house. I don't know, she must have been about 16 at this point. She moved out, she's like, see you guys, bye. She's not here anymore, I'm, I'm off, I'm going. But her problems with Thomas Seymour didn't end there. He kept chasing her, he wasn't done. He ended up asking for her hand in, her, uh, hand in marriage, not long after his wife had died. These people do not wait about. They're, they're like, I'm gonna seize this opportunity. Elizabeth turned him down though, cause she had zero interest in marrying him. But Thomas was actually getting really jealous of his brother. So his brother had a lot of power. Obviously he was in control of the king and same control of the king, but do you know what I mean? He was leader of this council and he was very jealous that his brother had secured this position and he was lifeless, pretty much. He, he had power, but not as much as his brother, quite clearly. And he had planned to, right. So Thomas, you're delusional, mate. You are delusional. So he had planned, he had planned to abduct the king. Yeah, so go kidnap the king. Then marry himself off to Mary Jane. Not Mary Jane, what's she called? Lady Jane Grey. So marry the king to Lady, Lady Grey Jane. Yeah, get that? Got that, good, good, got that, we're there. And he himself would marry Elizabeth. Putting like, it's basically so he's higher up in power. I don't know how this worked. It didn't work, it didn't work. Because he got caught and he ended up getting put on trial for treason and was executed. So that was end up, that problem disappeared. You know what I mean? It's gone. But, People were starting to question Elizabeth's loyalty to the king because of past relationships with Thomas Seymour. People were like, well, she, she's close to him, so obviously she might have some part of it. And the thing is, she would have benefited from this whole thing as far as like going up in succession. I can't get my words out. When she, when they interviewed her, she literally outwitted the interviewers. She were like, you're wrong. <laughs> they couldn't prove it. And she was so smart. She had, they had nothing on her. She wasn't incriminating herself. And they were like, fine, we can see there's no involvement in it. She knew what she was doing there. You know what I mean? She was a smart girl. She knew how to hold herself. She knew how to present herself. And clearly she did, you know what I mean? So after all that drama with Thomas Seymour and everything like that, Edward actually changed the line of succession and actually names um, Lady Jane Grey um, to be next on the throne, which really put a strain, it really pissed Elizabeth off. It put a strain on their relationship, as it would do, and I, I believe it pissed Mary off as well. I mean, it was like Elizabeth and Mary found something in common with all this, because they're like, excuse me, Mary being like, I'm meant to be queen next, and you know, if you don't have an heir and stuff, and then it's Elizabeth. Who's this woman that you just put in front of us? Like, it's not fair. So, that's what it is. And it's really sad because, obviously, like, Edward and Elizabeth had a really good relationship before all this, and it just went to shit, basically, um, because of, yeah. Elizabeth was actually banned from court as well because of the, the, the whole scandal of Thomas Seymour. Um, which is sad because she had nothing to do with it. Like, she got found innocent. On the 6th of July, 1553, Edward died and Mary did take the throne for a whole of, like, nine days. Like, she didn't take it long. And then Elizabeth, um, not Elizabeth, the other one, Mary, Elizabeth's half-sister, was like, it's my throne now. Thanks. Thanks for stepping in. I'll take over from here, though. Cool. And Mary had a vendetta to set. She was Catholic. She wanted to make England Catholic again after all the BS that went on while her dad was ruling and she intended on burning any heretics that she thought fit. Do you know what I mean? She was like, not in my country. It's not happening. Elizabeth at this point, 
technically would have been in danger. Like, it would have been a dangerous time for Elizabeth as she was a president. Am I saying that right? She wasn't Catholic anyway, that's for sure. So it would have been a very dangerous time for Elizabeth at this point. But she stayed quite neutral and she did throw a rein as well. She stayed quite neutral and sort of stayed out of trouble until Queen Mary did actually imprison Elizabeth in the Clout Tower of London because she thought she was conspiring to plot to get Mary off that throne and she'd be on it. But there was no evidence and two months later she was released from the Tower of London. Mary had a fierce reign but she, it didn't last long. She didn't have an heir. She did marry but she didn't have an heir. So there's no one to carry on the, the Tudor legacy I suppose other than Elizabeth and it did get passed down to Elizabeth. She became queen. She became, so Mary died in 1958 and the year Elizabeth was crowned Queen of England. Yay! I mean, this girl like went through everything. Every, like, imagine three-year-old, your mum gets killed because of treason and uh, adultery. Um, your dad is one of the most fearsome leaders England's probably ever had, or one of the most fearsome leaders England's probably ever had. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, imagine. And then you've got you know, the fact that your dad don't really would love you probably a little bit more if you were a boy. Which is like so sad to think about. I'm sort of mayor, I don't want to do him with it anymore. I'm gonna curl it, but I'm like, I'm good. The whole thing with Thomas Seymour, like, uh, the fact that another one of her mum's relatives, Catherine Howard, was put down. The fact that a stepmom, um, Catherine Parr, helped aid in her abuse. She went on to rule for 45 years and it was known as the golden era. I'm not gonna go into too much about her reign, but I'll give you a little bit of a, just a little few little tidbits that she did. So when she became queen, the country was bankrupt. Absolutely bankrupt, it was a state. She used to reuse the dresses, add different beads so she wasn't spending the money. Um, in the first 10 years of her reign, she ended up getting the country out of debt. She brought peace to a country which has been years of fighting of Church of England, Catholic. She brought a, a different perspective of, guys, it doesn't really matter, it's God. Like, we pray, like, it doesn't matter. She had her religious beliefs, but she didn't, she didn't go out and kill all the Catholics because she was like, I, we're not having Catholics. She just didn't, she was just happy. As long as everybody else was like happy doing what they wanted to do, she was fine with it. She's like, you do you boo, we've got bigger problems. As country's skin, I'm not gonna fight you all. Like, do you pray, you pray however which way you feel you need to pray. She kept a stable and functioning government, which is massive. She held victory over the Spanish admirer. She kicked ass. She was at the time when arts was flourishing, people like Shakespeare were about, like I could imagine just how rich in plays and all that fun stuff, imagine. Maybe it wasn't that great though because like dysentery and flu and stuff like that. Yeah, you die pretty easy. And the poor are really poor and the rich are, do you know what I mean? There's no like middle class really, I don't think. Not really anyway, but other than that, it would be nice. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is the story of Queen Elizabeth uprising to becoming the queen. Like, she had it rough, she had it hard, but my God, she ruled. She ruled amazingly. One little thing, she never actually talked about her mum, ever. She had a little picture in a locket of her mum. She never talked about her because she never wanted people to bring up the illegitimacy of her reign, which I think is really sad. But, you know, it's really, I, I've said this before, I said this in the Amberlynn video, like, Amberlynn wanted her daughter to be like, to, to to be rule and do amazing things and she 100% did. Um, Anne Boleyn wanted to change the world and a daughter did it. I think that's amazing. It makes me like well up thinking about it. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, I'd be so proud. Anyway. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know which historical figure do you want to see? Yeah. Anyway, guys, I shall see you on the next one.